This video was brought to you in part by the supporters of the AMTV Patreon. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the IDEM Review, the show where we have a good look and chat about the various television idents that we've come to know and love over the years. And for this instalment, we're going to be looking at the wacky world of Nickelodeon idents. Originally tested as Pinwheel in 1977, this educational style programming for children proved successful with those who could view it, as it was part of the Cube Cable subscription. Two years later, in 1979, Pinwheel was renamed to Nickelodeon, and became the first channel dedicated to showing children's programming exclusively, or without advertising too, at least until 1984. Now broadcast nationwide, Nickelodeon grew in popularity as the 80s began, and by the end of that decade was a household name for millions of Americans. Whilst Nickelodeon is recognised worldwide and continues to air children's programming today, its visual presentation has varied greatly over the last 40 years. And whilst we don't have time to look at every single one of them today, I've picked out a selection of idents from Nickelodeon's early years, giving us a slice of the channel at that point in time. So with that in mind, let's go all the way back to one of the very first visual identities for Nickelodeon, back in 1979. Introducing Nickelodeon, children's programming that's fit for children. 13 hours of programming a day, seven days a week, that will make them wonder, laugh, ponder, and think. Well, this is a far cry to what we'd normally associate with the channel. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Nickelodeon always had its signature orange branding, as they've used it for so long, but its origins are a lot simpler. Instead, we see a child looking into a black and white film projector, where the logo is displayed, the image of a man mimicking the child's actions, presumably watching some sort of film. This may seem like an odd choice for a children's channel, but when looking at the meaning of Nickelodeon, it makes more sense. Nickelodeons were some of the earliest examples of modern cinema experiences. Customers would pay five cents, or a nickel, to sit down in an Odeon, derived from Greek to mean a roofed over theatre, and view short films in the earliest days of cinema, with the peak being between roughly 1905 and 1915. So when you take that into account, this ident almost seems perfectly fitting for the channel, as the name is a direct callback to this style. Even with all of that context though, I still argue whether this was the right motif to launch the channel nationwide. Considering it was completely dedicated to children's programming, you would have thought the higher ups would have wanted something really bright and colourful, rather than a sequence which for the most part is played out in monochrome. A nice sequence, for sure, but not how many people would have assumed Nickelodeon started. It didn't last long though, and by the time the 1980s arrived, Nickelodeon was rebranded to something a bit more up to date and certainly more colourful. So let's now have a look at this particular ident from 1982. This channel is recommended by the National Education Association. Could you get any more early 80s? There's a lot to delve into here, not the least to say that the splashing of various colours and lights fits so well for this iteration of Nickelodeon. Gone is the black and white, and the logo is now caked in a glorious rainbow style of colours, the font of the logo becoming softer too, supposedly to appeal to a more child-centric audience. In a way, this style of ident is very typical of many channels of the time, back in the first few years of the 80s. Lots of emphasis on bright colours and various simple animations flying about the screen. The closest comparison I could make would be some of the early idents used by Disney for their releases on VHS around the same time. Whilst it is nice to see all of the colour come to Nickelodeon, the actual sequence feels a little aimless to me. Aside from the spherical graphics flying around the screen, there isn't that much going on, and may struggle to hold the attention of some children. I do really like the new Nickelodeon logo though, 
The rainbow colour scheme is blended in perfectly, and the softer font is a much more appealing look than what we saw back in 1979. It is worth noting that this wasn't the sole ident for Nickelodeon though. There were several variations of the silver ball, as it became known, but I wanted to choose this one as it gives more of the general feel of the ident of where the channel was with its appearance. The addition of the song is hilarious because, whilst it may seem really dated today, it surprisingly does work for the channel in my view. Sure, you couldn't get away with it today, but back in 1982, sure, why not? The silver ball would last until around the end of 1984, and when 1985 began, Nickelodeon would undergo another huge rebrand to what is probably its most iconic look. Now we've all heard that signature tune. This is such a huge shift from what Nickelodeon was doing with the silver ball. It's the first appearance of the iconic orange splatter logo that the channel would use for decades, and also the first time in which viewers heard that simple yet extremely catchy tune. There's so much going on. You see calendars, flying rockets, road signs, hot dog cars, you can barely take it all in. I do love pausing the sequence to look at all the different little scenes they made for the ident, and to be honest, the fast paced random scenario type of style is perfectly suited to Nickelodeon, both back then and indeed even today. This was the rebrand the channel definitely needed, and it became so successful and so iconic that this motif, the logo style, the signature tune even, would be heard on television screens for years to come. Whilst for me it may be a little too random and quick, like I don't really have time to appreciate everything, it still succeeds at being the perfect introduction and selling point for what at the time was the United States premier channel for children. And for the rest of the 1980s, several different variations of this concept would follow, many of them becoming just as memorable and iconic in their own right. And just to give you one as an example, here is one featuring a rather active bunch of fruit. Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching, Nick? Aren't you glad? You watching? You watching? You watching, Nick? This channel just loves their catchy tunes, don't they? We have a short and sweet sequence here. Some fruit comes alive to let you know that you're watching Nick. We see the channel logo everywhere before the fruit fall off the table and become part of the iconic orange Nickelodeon splatter. This was one of the first instances in which the channel would be abbreviated to Nick a short and snappy nickname that the channel would go to adapt and explore in the years to come. I love this sort of animation style too. It's simple, for sure, but there's just something charming and endearing about watching animated fruit sing in barbershop harmony. It, it just works. If you do some digging online, you can see several variations of this item that either feature the song with a different visual or the fruit singing something different. They really played around with the concept of a catchy tune mixed with some really eye-catching visuals. However, as the 1990s began, Technology was advancing to the point where more elaborate idents could be created for television channels. Nickelodeon wasn't shy about giving this a go either, and for their Nicktoons block of programming, here is what they had to offer audiences in I've got to say, for the early 90s, this isn't bad at all. When we look at the early computer-generated efforts of the 1990s, we often cringe in our seats, as what was impressive in its day doesn't hold a candle to what can be done now. Having said that, for the time, this must have been quite a feat to achieve. We have the Nicktoons blob, which morphs into various objects, including a dolphin, some kind of dinosaur, and then a human figure, all strutting around to the most 90s music you ever did hear. When you break it down, there isn't a huge amount going on with the sequence, but you have to admire what the designers were able to pull off. The orange colour has now firmly become the key identifier for the channel, to the point where the blob style focus point would be easily recognised by audiences of all ages. I say all ages because whilst remaining a children's channel, Nickelodeon had gained an older following from the success of their Nicktoons like Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy. In fact, the 1990s proved to be somewhat of a cultural peak for Nickelodeon, 
Not only was it turning out hit after hit show, but it arguably was at its most well known outside of the television world, including having attractions at theme parks and early talks of a potential hotel resort. If you were a 90s kid or someone growing up in the early 2000s, it was really hard not to know the word Nickelodeon in some way, shape or form. And to be honest, this ident, even though you could argue the CGI is a bit dated, still holds up really well and remains one of the most memorable idents from that decade. But for now, I think we'll leave our journey here for the time being. We've seen the beginnings of what would become the Premier Kids channel, from its humble beginnings after rebranding from Pinwheel to becoming the cultural staple of the late 80s and early 90s. Of course, there are several standout idents that followed in the late 90s, 2000s and 2010s, but perhaps we'll save those for another day. All that's left to be said is that when Nickelodeon wanted to make a splash, through the power of strong branding, creative concepts and memorable idents, they certainly were able to achieve that, perhaps even greater than they thought they ever would. And so that brings us to the end of another episode of the Ident Review. If you enjoyed this look at the early years of Nickelodeon idents, then please leave a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more Ident related content. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Well, that does bring us to the end of another day here on AMTV. We do hope you enjoyed the program, and a special thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and to everyone who's tuned in. Until the next broadcast, we wish you a good night.